Hello and welcome to worship for Sunday the 7th of November as we observe All Saints Day together. I am the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik, and I am delighted to be worshiping with you today. For our prayers today, you may wish to have a piece of paper, just regular A4 paper, cut into the shape of a cloud and a pen or a pencil to write with. Wherever we find ourselves, God is there ahead of us, providing food and water in the wilderness, rest for the weary, support for the journey, a tangible sense of God's presence, a call to the next task of the kingdom. Wherever we find ourselves in grief and in joy, in plenty and in want, God is there, ahead of us, providing. Let us pray. You are a God of endless capacity, for you will be who you will be. We confess that we like you to be who we want you to be, O oh God. We want you to match our passion, or our simplicity, or our rigidity, and yet you continually expand our experience of you, even as you define the limits of faithful zeal. We admit that we rarely expect to encounter you in the opposite of our preferences and desires, preferring to believe that we worship and pray and serve in the correct way. Forgive us for making you in our image, for narrowing your freedom, and forgive us, too, for the assumptions we make about those who know a different side of you. Remind us once again that you are not only beyond our comprehension, but beyond our control. So in the quiet of this place, speak again, O oh God to our successes and our failures, our zeal and our apathy, our one-sided vision and our hope, speak. For we are here to renew our relationship with you, to enliven our connection to the cloud of witnesses, and to strengthen our foundation on your word. So we stand on this holy ground, awaiting your voice, whether thundering or silent. Amen. And the lonely, a heart 
that love is those with no love at all Hand with the hand, the hurt and the hungry are the God who After King David came Solomon, who was renowned for his wisdom and wealth and for building the temple in Jerusalem. Unfortunately, the conscripted labor for the building of the temple and Solomon's political alliances through multiple marriages and the inequality between the palace and the people meant that after Solomon's 40 year reign ended, the succession was in a bit of disarray and split into the northern and southern kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Today's story takes place during the reign of Ahab, who was the seventh king of the northern kingdom. Ahab did not follow God's word. In addition, he married a princess from a foreign nation who brought with her the religious, cultural, political, and economic traditions of her own upbringing. Her name was Jezebel. The prophet Elijah, in an attempt to bring Ahab and Jezebel to faithfulness, declared there would be no rain in Israel until they repented and turned to God's way. He then went to stay with a foreign widow and her son, promising that her jar of flour and oil would never run out, and even healing her son when he fell ill. In the third year of this drought, Elijah had a standoff with the royal court prophets. They and Elijah each set up a sacrifice on top of Mount Carmel with the wood and the animal ready, and then called on their respective gods to send the fire. Baal did not answer. But God did in a spectacular way, and everyone who saw it declared, the Lord is God. Elijah, however, took that as an opportunity to have all the court prophets killed. We pick up the story that night in the royal palace as the king reports to the queen all that happened on the mountain. We are in 1 Kings chapter 19, and I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. 
he left his servant there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, get up and eat. He looked and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place, he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they're seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of abel as prophet in your place. for the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. I love this story and I often refer to it as Elijah's Earth, Wind and Fire concert. Although he doesn't get much boogie wonderland on the mountain. It's a fascinating story because, of course, Elijah was a famous and successful prophet. Just the chapter before this, he not only presided over one of the most astounding displays of God's power that anyone had ever seen, causing everyone to proclaim the one true God. He also dispatched the false prophets and ended the three-year drought. He was used to God showing up in big ways. And he trusted that God would do what God promised. Yet, when the political powers proved immune to God's persuasion, as they often had throughout history, remember Pharaoh's hardened heart? When that happened, Elijah's courage faltered a bit. He went off to be by himself in the wilderness and wished for the end. And when the end didn't come, 
He went instead to the very mountain where Moses, who had faced down Pharaoh and won, where Moses met God in such dramatic ways. The way things used to be on the mountain, God spoke to Moses in the cloud and in thunder that shook everything and in fire that rose up from the top of the mountain. The Israelites had seen God in the pillar of fire and cloud. They heard God's voice rumbling the air around them and the ground beneath their feet. Today on the mountain, Elijah heard and felt the wind and the earthquake and the fire, just as Moses had done. But unlike Moses, he didn't hear God there this time. Elijah was very zealous, full of certainty about who God is and what God does, and he had been a part of showing God's power in fire and water. But this time, it was different. This time, God knew Elijah needed to see another side of God. He was so wrapped up in what he thought God was supposed to be like, he'd forgotten there was more. And so came the sound of sheer silence. Or sometimes it's translated as a still small voice, a barely audible whisper. It was then that Elijah got a glimpse of God on the mountain. Not the way he expected, not the way he was used to, not the way it used to be, but what God knew he needed. And after all that, God asked Elijah the same question as when he'd first arrived at the mountain. What are you doing here? Why did you come to this Mountain. Why? Why this mountain? I wonder if when he heard that question, Elijah thought for even a moment about how God had been with him in places other than the mountain. After all, in the wilderness, when he was feeling so lost and alone, it was God's messenger and angel who brought his picnic lunch. It was God's creation that put forth the tree in whose shade he had slept. It was the strength of the breakfast the messenger provided that allowed him to walk 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain. He already had experiences of God being quieter, closer, more intimate, and more practical. Why did he need to go to the mountain? Perhaps he went there because he wanted to recapture the tradition, to do what his people used to do. Or perhaps he went there because he wanted to reconnect with his faith, and he thought that if he was going to talk to God, he needed to be in that particular holy place where God had revealed himself before. Perhaps he wanted to be strengthened by the cloud of witnesses to feel what Moses felt, and so be strengthened to have the courage Moses had in the face of the powers. What are you doing here, Elijah? The beauty of this story to me is that God was with Elijah the entire time, even when he couldn't see or recognize God's presence. Even when Elijah was feeling alone, abandoned, afraid, tired, and hungry. Even when he was looking so desperately for a sign in all the usual places and experiences. Even when the tried and true earth, wind, and fire didn't work. And yet, it was after all that, after the disaster, after the rushing, after the earth-shaking life changes, after the doorbell and phone stop ringing, after the flowers fade, when he was left alone with himself and the gaping silence of after. That's where Elijah finally knew God. 
God was there all along. And God was supporting the journey, even though it wasn't a journey God required, it was a journey Elijah needed to make. And when it didn't turn out the way he expected, God was there. And then, only then, does God turn Elijah's eyes forward. Elijah had been so caught up in what he thought God wanted, in what he thought God was supposed to do, so caught up in how alone he felt in following that God. And God had listened and carried him through all of that. And then into the sheer silence, God whispered, I have work for you to do. It won't be easy. It isn't what you thought you'd be doing, and it doesn't involve the people you're used to, but it's what I need. And just as I was with you every day up to now, in the royal courts, in the villages of Syria, on Mount Carmel, in the wilderness of Horeb, and on this mountain. I will be with you then, too. You are not alone. I'll surround you with people who will support and encourage and challenge you, who will help you see me in all those places you couldn't see me before. Now get up and go into the future I have planned for you. May it be so. Amen.
during the month of October, we received a special gift offering for two local charities that do important work. Our October gift day brought in 800 pounds, which means that 400 pounds goes to Mind Mosaic Child and Family Services and 400 to Belleville Community Gardens. Thank you all so much for your generosity in giving to these important causes in our community. You can, of course, still give to the Ministry of St. John's, to the mission that we do in this place and to the presence that we provide here as we seek to follow God's way here in Gurik. You can set up a standing order by contacting your bank or Peter, our treasurer. You can also give online through the Church of Scotland website and that information is in the, um, the links below. Or you can bring an offering to the church and put it in the offering plates at the doors or you can drop it through the manse door with a label on it and I'll get it to Peter or you can send it directly to Peter's house and if you need his information for that then please contact us and I will happily send that on to you. Thank you for your generosity and for your continued giving, your discipline of giving because it is our generosity that reflects God's generosity in our community. As we come to this time of prayer, you will want to have with you your cloud and a pen. One of the reasons that I think Elijah went to Mount Sinai when he was feeling stressed exhausted and alone was so that he could be connected to the cloud of witnesses, to stand where people of faith had stood and hopefully experience God's presence as they had done, to be encouraged by their witness and to find the strength to carry on in his part in the story that God is still writing. We can all use that encouragement ourselves the world continues to be stressful and exhausting and difficult, but we are not alone. So I invite you to take your cloud and a pen or a pencil or crayon and take a moment to think of those people in your life, whether they are living or dead, past or present. They could be people you know or have known personally or people you have only experienced from afar but have had an impact on your life. Particularly think just now of those people who have offered you nourishment when you needed it. People who have fed you, whether literally or spiritually, and write their names onto your cloud. And now take a moment to think of those people who have been a breath of fresh air in your life. Perhaps they even blew in on the wind and out again. Or perhaps they were like a wind that rushed in and upended things that needed changing. Or perhaps the people who have helped you to stand firm in a storm. And write their names on your cloud. And now take a moment to think of those people who have shaken things up and helped you to find new footing during times of change or difficulty or transition. Who has helped you figure things out when you didn't know what to do? Write their names 
on your cloud. Take a moment to think of those people who have brought light and heat into your life, purifying and clarifying your thoughts, challenging you to let go of old ways and grow into something new. People who have warmed your heart or your mind or your home with their presence. And write their names on your cloud. Take a moment to think of those people who have listened when you've needed a shoulder to cry on, or when you needed to moan or rage, or when you just had to tell a story. Those who have heard you and held your confidences and allowed you to just be. And write their names on your cloud. Take a moment to think of those people who have shown you the way, taught you, been examples of faith and life, helped prepare you for your own journey, and write their names on your cloud. We give thanks for all these people who have revealed God's presence with us, even if we can only see that looking back. And we offer our gratitude for the ways our paths have crossed and shown more light into the world. Friends, surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us pray. God of every time and place, you create us in your image and hold us in your care. You appear to each person as we need to know you, balancing our narrow understanding with your fullness. We give you thanks for your faithful people who have taught us your grace for those whose zeal inspires us, for those whose quiet strength shines through, for those who have worked faithfully day in and day out behind the scenes. We are grateful for those among your creation who have made sure all are fed and those who have encouraged us to rest and those who have supported our journey even when we weren't sure where we were going. 
Today we remember those who have gone on ahead of us. And especially within our St. John's community, we remember Alexander, Ron, Jim, Jim, Margaret, David, Robert, Vicki, George, Kathy, Joan, Myra, Dorothy, Rita, Betty, Robert, Christina, Roderick, Hamish, Jeanette, Terry, Peter, Isabel, Jerry, Tommy, Joyce, Christine, Campbell, Bunty, Elma, Effie, Maureen, Reg, Margaret, Ivy K, Maureen, Winnie, Anne, Ken, Alistair, Jim, John, John, Charlie, Mary, Anne, Pat, Jim, Helen, Neil, May, Daniel, Jean, Fred, Jennifer, Jimmy, Ian, Lester, Rona, Sheila, Tina, Anne, John, We remember those who have gone ahead of us, those who are in this great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. And today, as we remember, we are particularly grateful, O oh God, for your constant presence in every place. When we find ourselves in the wilderness of grief, you are there. When our lives are in chaos, you are there. And in the silence, after the storm, when the flowers fade and the cards stop and the phone no longer rings, when we feel completely alone, you are there. As we glimpse the great cloud of witnesses this day, we pray too for a sure sense of your companionship on this way, that we may be found faithful to the last, whatever you ask of us. We ask these and all things through the power of your spirit and in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us the wrong we have done, as we forgive those who have wronged us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Amen. Friends, go into your week knowing that God is with you. Whether you feel like you are walking through chaos and storm, or in silence, in grief or in joy, surrounded by people or on your own, know that God is with you. And as you go, may the Spirit of God go above you to watch over you. May the Spirit of God go beside you to be your companion. May the Spirit of God go before you to show you the way and behind you to push you into places you might not go alone. And may the Spirit of God go within you to remind you that you are loved more deeply than you can possibly imagine. May the fire of God's love burn brightly in you and through you into the world. Go in peace. Amen. Now may the Lord 